Oftentimes we need to fit data uh, that's made up of more than one variable to a function. So you already fit functions the, of one variable, let's fit one with two variables. And once you've done one with two, then doing it, uh, a function with three or four or et cetera variables, it's, it's all the same. Okay, so in this example, we're going to assume that we have uh, some sort of relationship between the hours of sleep students get per week and the hours of study they do per week and their resulting GPA. So the data are shown here. So we've got uh, the hours of sleep, the hours of study, and then what the GPA is. So let's assume that this is some sort of experimental information. So in these lines, we put them in as, as uh, row vectors, but then by putting in that apostrophe, we've transferred those to being, uh, to being column vectors. I'll just show you that here, I'm running this script. Okay, so you can see that we've transferred the original row vectors into column vectors. Great. Now if we're going to fit this data, we need to have basically one x and one y. So our y value is going to be our GPA. So let's just go ahead and put this in. So we need to have an x. Well, there's two different variables. You can think of them as x1 and x2. In that lab, what we're going to do is put those two different variables into one vector, which we'll call x. So we can say x is equal to the two different variables sleep and study. And I'll just put those vectors side by side as a matrix. And let me just show you how that works there. So you can see we've got sleep here and study here. If we're reading this, I, I typed this data in by hand because there weren't that many numbers, but in an experiment, you're more likely to have dozens of numbers. And so you'll probably have them in uh, a comma separated value file that's output by some instrument. And in that case, you can use the CSV read and read those the, the uh, independent variables such as sleep and study directly into the X matrix. Okay, so we're gonna fit the GPA uh, as a function of the variable x. So we need to fit it to some function, and we're going to assume here that uh, our prior knowledge, our prior research shows us that there's a linear relationship between x and grades. So we're going to define a function that has some parameters and has some x values. Then we're going to specify the actual functional form. So we say there's some parameter and we're going to multiply that times the, um, the amount of sleep we get. And the amount of sleep is going to be the first column of the x, of the x uh, matrix. And we're going to do that for all the variables. There's going to be a slope associated with each variable. So another slope associated with the second the second variable. So uh, the first column here of this matrix, remember that's the sleep vector. And so this parameter tells us how rapidly GPA varies with the amount of sleep we get. Right? So this is M1 times X1. And over here, we have a different slope associated with uh, our other variable. That's the second column in the X matrix, that's over here. So that's the hours of study. And so that tells us this is the slope. It tells us how rapidly our GPA varies with the amount of studying that we do. Okay, great. And then we need a Y intercept. So that's just the third parameter. Great. So we've got our function. We Before we can fit, we need initial values for uh, the parameters P1, P2, and P3 and we don't really know what they are, so we're just gonna put in ones. So we're assuming that there's a, uh, a positive slope associated with, um, with sleeping and with studying. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and do the fit. So we have to put the results from our fit into something. We'll put them into something called grade model. And then we're gonna use our fit nonlinear function. 
So fit nonlinear model, we've got to put in uh, our variables x and y. Uh, x is just called x, but we don't have any y, right? What is y? y is our GPA. So we're saying GPA is a function of x, where x is made up of sleep and studying. All right, we have to put in the function that we're fitting it to, which we called grade. And we have to put our initial values for our parameters, which we put in guess. OK, so we should be ready to run this script. Run it, and we see a lot of things pop out. First of all, it tells us it's fitting to this model, which is that's what we wanted. And then we get the results from our fits. So the most important part over here is our parameters. So this is the slope with respect to sleep. This is the slope with respect to studying. And this is our y-intercept. So even if we didn't study at all or sleep at all, we would still get something better than zero. Okay, And this is the uh, estimated uncertainty for each of these. And really important over here is the p-value column. column. Uh, we want these numbers to be small. So the fact that these, at least these ones for our two slopes, are getting close to zero means that we can be pretty confident that these are not equal to zero. So if the slopes aren't equal to zero, that tells us that that variable actually matters and does affect our function. Great. Uh, the F statistic is uh, kind of important too because if it has a low p-value, a p-value much lower than one or much uh, uh, very close to zero, then we can say that it's unlikely that the correlation between the variables is just arising by chance. Okay, so this is actually pretty, pretty small. So an arbitrary number we sometimes use for p-values is that we want them to be less than 0.05 and these are all pretty small except for this one that the y-intercept is not very significant. Okay, um, looking at numbers is okay, but if you really want to show somebody a relationship, it's better to make a picture. So what we should do is plot our theoretical values uh, for GPA against our actual values for GPA. So first, to do that, we need to generate theoretical values. So let's call, let's call it GPA theory. Oops. or theoretical, I guess, be better, better. And let's have that, so you're gonna use the fit eval function. And for fit eval, you need to put in um, what you're evaluating. So you're gonna put stuff into grade model. And you're gonna put x values in. So by putting x values, into grade model, and remember grade model has all the information from your fit, it's gonna spit out theoret theoretical values for y. In this case, y is your, is your GPA. Okay, so that's gonna give us theoretical values for y, and so then we can plot those against actual values for y. So we say GPA is gonna be on one axis, and GPA theoretical will be on the other. So it's a little bit different from other fits you've done because you're not doing or rather plots you've done, because it's, it's not x versus y, it's y theoretical as a function of experimental y. And when you do this, you expect to see a straight line. In fact, the slope should be equal to one, right? Because ideally, the GPA and the GPA theoretical are gonna be identical. Okay, whenever I do a plot, I like to do show graph at the end of my script so that every time I rerun the script, it'll pop that plot to the front of the screen here. Oops, we've made a mistake. Uh, ah, yes, right here, this is supposed to be an underscore. That's better. Okay, so here's our plot. We've got, uh, here we've got our values of GPA that from our from our from our data and here's our values of GPA from our model and we can see it looks like they're following right along a straight line that has slope one. So it looks like a pretty successful fit.